So hello everybody to today's webinar uh, regarding data exchange with August and Symphony. Uh, I hope you all can hear me well. My name is uh, Ralf Klimke from Argosense. I'm responsible for sales and marketing here in this company. And next to me, I have uh, Christian Middle, who is uh, responsible for uh, services and development. And uh, he will later take over uh, the live demo part where we will show you a little bit more about uh, possible integration uh, with the supplier uh, and an OEM here in this case. So let's come to the first slide here to the agenda so you you all know um, in the automotive world uh, we have a lot of and deep cooperation between suppliers and um, and, and car manufacturers and what we want to um, show today is one of a possible solution how this um, let's say deep cooperation um, can can lead to um, where suppliers and OEMs, for example, exchange uh, defect management data between um, between their companies uh, in terms of uh, software and system development. And uh, this is where we have specialized um, our product for and our company for in uh, from one perspective. And this is mainly what, what we want to talk about today. So a few words about Argosense, then about our solutions, what we have in our uh, software portfolio and then we will talk about the error management in, in principle how this is uh, working for data exchange and after that Christian will take over and give you a live demo um, with the BMW TIAC system um, where we want to synchronize data uh, to uh, to Jira and show you the data there so this is a very simplistic uh, example but from principle uh, you will see then how this is working also with all other uh, OEM systems which are currently uh, available for, <clears throat> for you guys. So a few words about Argosense. Um, we have founded the company in 2009 um, with the idea of specialization in tool integration and, and data exchange because we found that a lot of the ALM systems on the market are not well integrated with each other and uh, especially when it comes to exchanging data between different companies. Um, there are no real standards and uh, we, we, we try to give here a very good option um, for our customers to make that at least internal um, to kind of a standard. Uh, in 2000, 2013, we decided to uh, bring up a solution for requirements management and traceability. So if you are looking for maybe a good replacement for, for doors, uh, which is, I think, already um, um, announced with end of life. I think next year, um, look look at our solution. I think it's a very um, affordable and, um, of course, feature-rich solution, which is uh, which is very capable and, and and being a good replacement for systems like uh, IBM Rational DOS, for example. But that will not be the topic today. So our um, consultants, our um, service people, our um, our sales people, and also our support people, they have a good expertise with all leading ALM tools. Partly they are coming from other ALM vendors. So this is very important in terms of tool integration and data exchange because we do not only know our own products, we also know the products we are integrating with uh, extremely well. And I think that's a great benefit for, for our customers here. Uh, we have a strong representation in the automotive industry. Um, you will see that on a later slide. I think we have about 50 to 60 percent uh, automotive customers. And that was one of the reasons why we um, took the path in specializing our product also for data exchange, especially in the automotive world. You will see that also with the systems we are supporting. And last but not least, um, our product development, and I think that's a little bit different from the typical North American companies. Um, we really have focus on our customers and markets, so we are really reacting quite quite fast if new, if new um, questions or feature requests or maybe also problems with the with the product exist so i think um, we we have a lot of people here have worked for for one of these or for different of these large companies and customers very often had to wait for months and years for new for new features i think we are handling that a little bit different and uh, um, i hope our customers are 
hopefully satisfied enough to, to, to see that, that we are really caring about them. Um, here are some of our customers, um, as, I, as I mentioned before. So um, if there is, if, if we have any new prospects here today, um, just give us a call or shoot us an email if you want to have maybe a first hand impression from one of our customers. So maybe we can get you in contact with one of our customers so that they can act as a reference for you. So usually they are quite open to that. Um, our solutions, so I just gave you a short impression about our solutions. Now here a little bit more detail. So what we're talking about today is Argus and Symphony. And we are looking at the second bullet, so autom automated B2B data exchange. But on the other hand, of course, syst uh, the system is, um, um, is, is on the market for ALM internal tool integration as well. So if you have uh, different ALM products in your house, you can use Symfony for that um, as well, of course. And as I already mentioned, our uh, requirements management platform, uh, which is extremely, uh, with extremely modern architecture, uh, web-based or as I should say browser-based. Um, and as I said, is I think as feature rich as other products on the market, uh, but with extremely less total cost of ownership uh, in comparison to them. Um, so the, the, the part of tool integration, just a few words on that. So if you have different systems, for example, for test management, for requirements management, change defect management, and so on, and maybe not a complete ALM platform, um, then you should also look at, at Argus and Symphony because here we are integrating all the different, we call it domains, um, into a complete process chain. So we, we are, we, we have, or we can connect all the, the different tools to kind of a bus system where uh, all tools can can uh, um, interact with each other uh, regardless um, let's say where they come from all we need is an api but usually we are delivering everything um, you need to to implement and the solution um, it's very flexible in terms of um, customization uh, we have made uh, a large change in the new, uh, in, the, in the latest release we have uh, published uh, recently, where we are now, I would say, uh, yeah, delivering synchronization templates where uh, a lot of our uh, 10 to 11 years experience is already incorporated in that. And I think that makes it in the meantime for our customers extremely easy to um, to implement the system and, and make a connection, go live with a, with a new connection within just a few hours or a really a low number of days instead of um, having to, to implement or having to uh, uh, um, program something um, by, by yourself. So we are supporting mainly customers which are going then the best of breed support. But on the other hand, of course, we have customers using these large um, ALM systems like PTC Integrity or Polarian, where not all the aspects are covered maybe completely. So also there they have very often the need to integrate with, uh, with other third party products. And this is of course the reason why we are also supporting these kind of tools. So um, for complete list of um, for a complete list of, of uh, the, the tools we are supporting we can have a look here just on uh, it's now no it will not change sorry you can have a, a look on our website um, there's an adapter section and there you can see um, all the tools we are currently supporting and which can be integrated with each other I just wanted to show you the website but uh, I have a little bit technical issues here at the moment. Um, so now let's go to the topic for today, data exchange. Uh, so more or less the same count, as I said before, counts also for data exchange. So regardless of which internal, let's say defect or change management tool you are using internally, you can exchange data with, uh, with your external partners, with OEMs, with car manufacturers here, um, which are usually offering some kind of proprietary um, systems on their end where you need to connect to. Um, 
as I said, the same counts here. We have, uh, in the last years, we have created so-called synchronization templates, um, which, which uh, cover all the experience we have made in the last years. And <clears throat> last but not least, and very important, of course, we are also supporting with out-of-the-box adapters. There's nothing you have to care about, so to say, or develop by yourself uh, to connect to the systems provided by the OEMs. For example, BMW, TIAC, or Daimler, Dante, or VW, uh, Volkswagen, um, KPM, or whatever. Or maybe using standard formats like the ASIM format to exchange data with each other. So everything is possible here. So let's, uh, before we go into a little bit more features for, for Symfony, let's, let's just have a look at the special use case here today. Um, so what is the situation? Usually, of course, um, development cycles decrease time after time. I think um, the development uh, or the, the requirements for quality and security, uh, which is quite opposite to the first point, are, are increasing. So you have to develop with more quality in less time. And I think that's one more reason, of course, to have a good integration uh, between the business partners and the development partners. Um, we see that there is a lot of coordination efforts. If you do not have, um, let's say, automated uh, solution for, for these uh, tasks here. Um, and of course, uh, this ends up probably then in maybe not timely communication um, if you do not have kind of a system which is caring about all the data exchange here. Um, so, and usually what we see, the supplier portals I just mentioned, they very often have two kinds of uh, interaction modes. So one is a kind of an inter interactive access via web interface so that your um, developers can access the OEM system and see the defects within their, their own web interface. Or we can have a batch or automated access via an API. So very, of course, usually they, they offer within their portal a, either REST API or you exchange data with a kind of an XML format and down and upload data from an FTP or OFTP server. So stuff like that is usually the case and the situation when it comes to data exchange between the parties. Um, then the OEM usually determines the technical connection on the one hand side. So this means, um, for example, at Daimler, the technical connect technical connection or the tool is called Dante or the, the, the latest one which will replace Dante is called Stark. Um, BMW has its own system, Porsche has its own system, Volkswagen as well, and so on and so on. Some OEMs or business partners, they give uh, the suppliers direct access to uh, to the tools they use, for example, direct access to Atlassian Jira or to Polarion. Or these are all things we have seen and implemented in the past, of course. Or they have, um, as I mentioned before, an FTP or an OFTP access, and uh, you need to exchange data in a special file format, for example, in the standardized ASAM format, for, for example, here. So these are the different um, different ways to um, to achieve a technical connection with your with your OEM and um, at the same time usually they also determine the processes that means the workflow when data and, and which after which rules it flows the synchronization uh, itself so maybe the synchronization intervals but also the attribute mappings usually are mainly determined by by the OEM here so this means as a supplier, um, you have somehow uh, you need somehow a way to implement all these things um, um, in in kind of a piece of software in order to to automate all that stuff here. Um, this is a example process from from an OEM. Um, so here you can see a little bit of the complexity, of course. So you have to align the different states your the defect is uh, can can get. Um, but at the same time, of course, um, there are other things in terms of workflow and also in terms of attribute mapping which have to be configured. And from the technical perspective, uh, it usually looks like um, that um, the OEM gives an order to the supplier for 
kind of a control unit, for example. Um, then the, the supplier is starting development, um, makes its an internal testing. Of course, they uh, they have uh, their own uh, internal test or defect management system like Jira, RTC, or whatever. Um, and after quite some time, uh, a sample will be delivered to the OEM, and the OEM makes its own tests. And then, of course, some uh, defects will occur. And at the same time, maybe you have to at, at, at the latest in the point where the, where a sample was delivered, maybe the supplier also has to uh, deliver um, or, or give information about test results um, to the OEM by himself. So there is a way, there's a need to, to interact with each other and the OEM usually they have these portal solutions, for example, a Jira in a DMZ or the Dundas system where you can connect to our SFTP or OFTP server where they put their data either in an XML-based format or they give you access uh, yeah, in a, um, an API, mainly REST API. So the question is how to connect and how to distribute and um, um, synchronize the data between the parties. So this is a technical question here. So from the requirements perspective with regards to the process, of course, um, the coordination of the processes with your, with the supplier internal workflows, which have been incorporated into maybe your Jira or your TFS have to be done. Then um, usually customers expect a very easy adoption to the given processes um, with the logic of the, of the synchronization product. Um, then you have to, or the suppliers have to agree with uh, and, and align with the data and field mapping. So this is, I would say, in our experience, in the meantime, I think the most extensive um, task here in, to get to a, to a running solution. So it's not the tool, it's more really to, to uh, agree on the, on the process and on the, um, on the field mappings here. And then, of course, customers require um, that if they have set up a project once, they want to, of course, set up multiple projects with much less effort when they already have agreed for data mappings and stuff like that, so that they can simply can configure new projects within a, a administrator interface with a few mouse clicks um, to to just uh, get the next projects on board uh, for synchronization, of course. Um, from the technical perspective, the requirements we we are faced with usually are, of course, the adoption to the portal-specific formats and API. We just talked about that. Then, of course, the synchronization should be completely, really completely automated without any manual work um, for the parties. Um, the technology should be reusable in terms of it can be used for multiple connections with multiple OEMs, but also, of course, uh, with different uh, projects for, for one business partner here. Um, and, of course, um, kind of an independence from the internal tracking or change management tool. So if you're using Jira today, but maybe replace that with TFS in future. So this should also be um, supported somehow. So um, these are all the different requirements here. And of course, reliable, reliability of technology, um, and especially at high data volume and, and, and a lot of exchange intervals. So that there is kind of a, let's say, a load balancing, uh, option here in the product as well. So these are the, I would say, the main requirements we are faced um, from, from our customers. And of course, we, um, we try to reflect all these within in the products. So what alternatives are usually on the market or are used? Um, so what we see, of course, there's a uh, web interface very often um, available for the supplier side given by the OEM. But of of course, um, then you have to manual maybe copy and paste stuff from the web interface into your internal system. So I think that's that's not really practical and it's very, very error prone, of course. Um, then a lot of companies, they uh, started self, self uh, developed uh, software projects or they have con uh, um, consulted uh, external companies uh, to program um, kind of a software solution for the data exchange 
Of course, this is usually very high effort and uh, the maintenance of that is, is very extensive. If there's just a little change in the API or in um, in the mapping, then very often you have then to, to really go into the code again and, 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 and recode stuff. Um, or if you want to connect a new customer, you have to develop again the same thing, but different uh, differently for a different uh, portal, of course. So it's really a lot of effort. With Symfony, so everything is really completely automated. It's flexible. It can be used for different business partners. It can be used for different projects. For one business partners, you can ex extend it. You can use it for internal tool integration, of course. And as I said, with the latest release with our um, out of the box synchronization templates, the effort for implementing um, a synchronization project is very, very low. Um, okay. And in the end, it's really Symfony is a one for all solution where you really can use it for all your connections to all your suppliers uh, and all your internal systems. Um, so which gives you really a common technology um, for all your integration um, tasks you have in your in your company or in your development organization. So let's just have uh, a few slides more before I hand over to Christian. So it's more or less here showing you um, um, solution how it would work with Symfony. So we got with the last slides that far here. So now we are uh, setting up the connection. So usually then the supplier uses Symfony and um, we implement or we, we install the respective portal adapter for the for the OEM system. So we can then retrieve the data and put it back into your internal change management system. So in this data flow, of course, goes in both directions. Um, it's that simple as you see it here on the pictures, but it can of course get more complex um, at the latest than when you have to integrate more than one customer. And I assume that most of the suppliers, they have more than one customer. And for example, here we can integrate uh, with the Daimler Start system and we can just install another adapter for the BMW system. We can install uh, Volkswagen system adapter and for example for Porsche Fifth and so on and so on. So can be as much as as adapters as, as you as you need <clears throat> for your customer base. But the complexity can even be bigger because you don't only have one project, uh, one electronic device project with your with your customers from a supplier standpoint, but maybe multiple projects. And of course this can be handled with uh, Argus and Symphony as well. And additionally, maybe suppliers also have sub suppliers and also these can be integrated into your or in the supplier world in the supplier tool chain uh, using Argus and Symphony with the same means and options. Um, we are integrating the, the OEMs here. So last but not least, just as a summary, um, so Symphony, as I said, supports several portals, tools, and formats right out of the box. For example, here, uh, BMW systems, Daimler systems, Volkswagen system, Porsche. And we are also supporting different file formats like the ASAM standard. Uh, we have some customers exchanging data via Excel tables, which is also possible. Um, and of course, uh, for the internal uh, side, so to say, uh, we really do not care which which tool the supplier is using. So we can connect to nearly all tools which are available on the market uh, with regards to change and defect management here. So here we have the absolute flexibility um, to bring the systems together. Okay, so now let's see how this is working in uh, real life. I hope it's working now with uh, changing the view. Okay, now you should see Christian's screen and I think it's looking good, yes. Very good. So, Christian, your turn. Thank you, Ralph. So, I have um, 
I have been installing Symphony 3.2 latest version. Um, by the way, on a side note for existing customers, watch out in the next couple of days for a service release 3.2.1 coming up. Um, highly recommended to upgrade your 3.2.0 um, installation. And I have installed in my Symphony the TI Easy adapter, which will help us connect to the BMW tickets. I have also installed the Jira adapter. Um, I have installed in my Symphony what we call the basic template. The basic template is the best um, practice collection um, that we have developed during the last two years. Um, to help consolidate all the all the good practices that we have that we have seen in um, in the customer situations, and I have installed the default process that is available to customers, um, which connects uh, TZ with Jira. So that's the BMW to Jira integration, um, our latest version. I have been also configuring everything properly. So for BMW, we are connected with the uh, development environment. So I created con configuration um, for the development environment. And as you can see for the adapters in uh, Symfony, it's a little bit depending on, on um, what their connection requirements are. So like for Jira, I have created a config set called local that connects this to a local Jira instance that I'm running that is here. Um, and then I have been also configuring the process itself. The process, uh, the standard process, what it needs to know is which uh, BMW connection it uses, which Jira connection it uses. So I just do have one um, each. And then, of course, it needs to know which Jira type, issue type we are working with, in case objects need to be created, um, what type should they be. It needs to know which Jira project we are working uh, with. That is just what you can select from the list. And then there's a couple of mapping scenarios that the standard process is looking for. Mainly the question if, um, so that's now the incoming side of the story, mainly the question, what should I do if there's a new BS1 ticket um, to be created in JIRA? What should I do to update BS1 tickets in JIRA? And what should I do um, to update uh, BS2 tickets from the MW perspective? I have um, set up these mappings here. I've just created a very simplistic example. So this um, mapping scenario connects TZ with JIRA, my uh, development instance TZ with local JIRA, and then underlying uh, just a, a propagation of the title into summary. Um, those mapping scenarios can be easily extended. So you have available all the attributes for, for BMW, like error descriptions, and then all the attributes for the JIRA side, so I could add just a description and continue with more, more attributes, priority, and whatever you might think of. I have then also created a scheduler so that the process is running on a regular basis as agreed with the BMW folks. Um, and then I have finally already started the uh, process itself a couple of minutes ago. So um, you, you can see um, for our project in the BMW environment, there's just there's really a huge amount of tickets and it's just went through half of the story. So there is what we call a process diagnosis view, which is going to tell us what the system currently does and how far each individual uh, transaction has been going. So, um, as I said, it's the initial case where we where we load the data. If I just switch over to Jira again, you can see all of these um, these tickets that are uh, being created. Of course, the standard process also does the synchronization of the attachments, as we can see here. Uh, my apologies for all these abstract names. That is according to the BMW test environment. Those tickets are generated automatically on a nightly basis. So I have no influence on that. Um, and as we can see in the JIRA, of course, now in the moment we do have 353 three tickets. Um, and if I just refresh the screen, so we're going to see, okay, it's 520 tickets. And so that means Symphony in the in the background is really pushing pushing for the new um, for the new tickets. Um, 
And that's pretty much um, the whole story from a, from a product point of view. Um, and if we just jump back to the configuration, similar to um, this TZ to Jira uh, process, we do have in our library all kinds of company, uh, all kinds of combinations. So there's a TZ to Integrity, there's a TZ to RTC, whatever kind of com combination you need, it's ready built. And the good um, the good news is that these processes are also um, then um, then practically proved. So we have been using them for practical process uh, projects, which will help speed up the process of getting it um, up and running. Currently. Um, a little bit of a roadmap information. Currently, we are about to finalize the works on the new uh, Daimler environment. I do not know, not know how many of you have been, uh, at least for the existing customers, have been informed by by Daimler about the um, about the end of life of the the old Dundee system. We are currently in the last stages of coming up with the um, with the. Uh, with the adapter for the new stock system, and as as we did for for BMW, there will be also processes available, so that would help us to easily uh, convert over to to the new timeline timeline endpoint. So that's everything from my side. Um, thanks very much for having me, Ralph. Okay, um, so I'm just jumping back. My screen. Oh, this one. Okay. So now you should see again the screen. Um, yeah, some some additional things um, I would like to mention. Um, I just uh, I mentioned them on a very high level, but I think what is very uh, very important, especially if uh, for for customers with. Uh, I would say larger uh, environments is the capability for clustering for horizontal load balancing so that you simply can add several um, symphony clusters or servers um, next to each other and um, with a simple configuration they will be connected with each other with each other and then they will completely automatically um, <clears throat> balance the load between the different clusters. So it doesn't matter if you have two, three or four. So Symfony is really uh, distributing all the synchronization tasks between, between the different servers. And should one of the servers fail for some reason, uh, the uh, remaining cluster or clusters will take over the tasks from the, from the failure uh, node um, so that nothing gets lost and everything, everything gets, gets, uh, gets worked on here. Um, another important thing is a um, little bit more from, from the content perspective. So, of course, we can also um, synchronize contextual information and attachments. That means we can transfer, maybe that's mainly for internal uh, tool integration, transfer uh, the, the logical hierarchy of, um, of different uh, items which are stored in a, in a system uh, and the structure of the elements, of course. Um, and we can, as, as seen before, we can, of course, synchronize also file attachments which are connected maybe to a defect or to a test result or whatever. Um, yes, and with the multi-tenant capabilities, for example, you can you can distribute um, the, the, the administration to sub-administrators, maybe department-wise or depending on your internal organization here. So, of course, um, the synchronization processes can run in parallel. So, you, it's, it's not limited that you only can run one process and this one, the next process has to wait for, for the current process. You can have, that's, that's how you can um, um, integrate several OEMs or several suppliers to your system, of course, and uh, run the processes uh, in parallel. They can be triggered either uh, by a change in the system, maybe, but usually they, we, are, we are using, or most of our customers are using um, the time controls um, synchronization where you just enter a schedule and um, it will be, uh, and the synchronization will start in the scheduled intervals um, up one after each other. Um, and I think it's the last 
thing here I want to mention is, and this is very special, I think, um, and we call it intelligent data linking. So we have a database also delivered with the system. And in that database, we store um, on the one hand side, the combination of the data record. So in this case, the TACI record has an ID and the JIRA record has an ID, of course, when we created it. And we are keeping track of, of that combination, of course. So you do not need an attribute, for example, in uh, in, in Jira for the TS for the TIEC um, attributes uh, uh, number, for example, or the item number. And what is much more important, uh, we are also storing um, um, what data has been transferred already. So we will check uh, for each transfer if data is really changed. Um, after the last run and we will only synchronize the data which really has been touched and changed between the systems so this significantly reduces network uh, load and of course data volume here okay so i think <clears throat> we are at at the end of uh, of uh, our session today maybe christian maybe you want to add some some words regarding effort. So what we are typically now in the in the last year or last months um, have identified as a typical effort for for setting up maybe a new system between a new supplier and a new OEM. So starting from scratch, is there an idea? From all the projects we've been doing this year, I see there is two answers to this. Number one answer is for customers uh, that have uh, done most of the testing work with the OEMs on their own. The effort is usually uh, just a couple of days, like two, three days, um, where we help out with an initial training on how Simply works, um, where we help out with the in initial installation of the adapters and the configuration of them, also an introduction on how the mapping module works, an introduction on how to translate the mapping contract that has been that has been created with the OEM into into the mapping uh, module, and then usually those customers were just doing all the testing on their own, like going. This is this is a little bit more time-consuming part of the story, uh, where you usually have to go like in the case of BMW, you have to go through like I don't know 16, 17 use cases. Go back into your Jira, make a status trans transition, report that back to to BMW. They're going to check if it's properly um, properly reflected in their system, and so on. Um, so for customers doing that on their own, it's very it's just a couple of days. Um, some customers though have taken advantage of, of a more superior package where we were also helping in this um, in this testing. Those were typically then around 10, 10 days. Um, but as I understand, the testing is very, uh, I would say, very dependent on the tools, so the internal uh, change management tools configuration. Yes. So this is mainly where we do not have, um, let's say, a lot of, <clears throat> a lot of options in, in in terms of changing something. So there, of course, this is more from an administrative perspective for the for let's say for the Jira tool or for the TFS tool here. So that's the reason why the customers usually are doing that by themselves. Yeah, which makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I mean, we do not have a very deep understanding usually of, of, of the tool configuration. Then, yeah. Okay, so um, if you have any, any questions, I think it's now the right time to ask them. So currently I do not see any. Um, in the meantime, so if there is, uh, let's go to the next slide. So if you if you uh, want to contact us uh, with regards to a quotation or more information regarding the system, uh, of course, just um, either you already have contact to our uh, sales department or just um, call us or write us an email to the email address here. You, you can see here, as I said, on the website, you will find the latest and greatest, I don't know, it's working. The latest and greatest list of tools we are currently supporting. So here you can see that one. So for development tools and here you, you will see the list for different uh, portals and group applications um, we are supporting with adapters. So that's coming 
here are, let's say, out of the box. Okay, so if we do not have uh, any any other questions, so thank you very much for your participation. And um, I hope we will have the chance to talk to you soon again. So bye bye and enjoy the rest of your day.